Hello everyone, this is the big fight and I'm Maria Shakil. India, that is Bharat, shall be a union of states. This is how Article 1 of the Indian Constitution describes the country, underscoring the unity of India. That's how democracy was envisaged by the makers of our constitution. But over the last few months, a strong North versus South narrative is playing out. Three southern states, Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu, have reached Delhi to knock on the doors of the central government, alleging discrimination in the federal funds allocated to states. Karnataka government was the first to take the streets as top leaders of the state, including Chief Minister Siddharamaiah and his deputy, D.K. Shivkumar, gathered at Jantar Mantar. They claimed the BJP-ruled government at the centre is withholding funds and has purposely reduced the state's share of tax revenue. Taking a cue from Karnataka's protest, MPs from Tamil Nadu and Kerala staged protests and through the demonstrations, the state governments highlighted what they claimed was injustice in tax devolution and grants in aid they have been subjected to over the past five years. Tamil Nadu MPs of the ruling DMK and its alliance partners protested near the Mahatma Gandhi statue in the parliament complex. Kerala Chief Minister Pinaray Vijayan and members of his left front government held protests at Jantar Mantar, which was joined by Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. The centre versus states row over funds allocation to states has heated up since Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman presented the interim budget on February 1st. The Finance Minister has responded to the charge going state by state, explaining that devolution to states happens as per Finance Commission recommendation and that she had no discretion in the allocation of tax revenues. Over the last few weeks, we have seen consistent efforts by the Modi government to quell this narrative. From his first public meeting of 2024 on January 2nd in Trichy to roadshow in Kochi to Darshan at Gurvayur Temple. Also on the Ramayana Trail, Prime Minister Modi visited Rhyme temples across southern states. His first stop was Veer Bhadra tem Temple in Lipakshi in Andhra Pradesh on December 16th. And then came Bharat Ratna for two South Indian icons. Former Prime Minister P.V. Narasimha Rao and agriculture economist M.S. Swaminathan. And in order to drill the message of outreach further, the central government has set up a committee of secretaries to safeguard the interests of SC communities like the Madigas and other such groups who are a significant voting bloc in Telangana, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. In fact, if, if I were to give some numbers, the Madiga community constitutes at least 50% of the total scheduled castes in Telangana alone. And these are the visuals which are interesting again. The BJP is also exploring alliances with southern leaders. Jagan Reddy met the Prime Minister a few days after Chandrababu Naidu met Amit Shah and JP Nadda. On the big fight tonight, we give you a complete picture and help decode this narrative. Let me bring in uh, the panelists now. Uh, we have M.B. Rajesh, a cabinet minister of, uh, of uh, Kerala, uh, GVL Narasimha Rao, uh, Rajya Sabha MP, T.S. Singh Deo, senior leader of the Congress, A. Sarvanan, spokesperson of the DMK, and Gurcharan Das is an author. GVL, beginning with you, these three states are among many opposition rule states uh, all of which claim that the GST compensation are due. But Finance Minister has called these as false claims. I'm asking you, there must be a way out uh, of this. And how can the centre really present the right picture rather than making it about truth and lies? Uh, good evening to you and all the panellists. I think uh, this government... Uh, uh, Honorable Finance Minister, Honorable Prime Minister, uh, in the true spirit of federalism, has provided compensation to the states even beyond the uh, period for which this was supposed to have been uh, uh, constitutionally mandated. 
uh, I think if any state is claiming the GST compensation is not being paid to them, I think it's a lie. Uh, the finance minister, uh, what he she stated is on record. And if uh, opposition ruled states have any uh, uh, have have uh, have have uh, we, if they want to make these claims again, let them come out with. Uh, with, with their statements. I think quite often we have seen how state governments ruled by the Congress and other opposition parties have, have uttered lies on GST because most decisions with regard to GST, even uh, for example, the, the rates or on various uh, products are decided in the GST council. But uh, these opposition rule states go on to claim as if these are de decisions made by the central government. So I think the, uh, uh, the, the, the political opportunism of these opposition rule states has been exposed time and again and their claims even now are certainly flawed and only to generate some kind of a political false narrative in their favor. Rajesh, Cabinet Minister of Kerala, only recently we saw how it played out in the Supreme Court where the center said that Kerala is one of the most financially unhealthy state. My point here is that the center has denied providing loans, loan assistance as the state did not follow the guidelines related to branding, naming for five central government schemes. Is this more to do with a realization that some of the central government schemes have traction, uh, they have more, uh, you know, recall value and hence this reaction by some states including yours? See, first of all, let me make it clear that the allegation that Kerala is the most financially unhealthy uh, state is absurd. And Kerala's economy's uh, uh, fundamentals, economy's fundamentals are very strong. Let me ask uh, BJP's representative, what is the debt GDP ratio of union government and what is the debt GDP ratio of the state government? It is 59% for the union government and it is just 36% for the state government of Kerala, for the state of Kerala. So there is a huge difference between the debt GDP ratio of uh, union government and state. And let me ask Mr. JVL Narsim Harau, what is the fiscal deficit incurred by the union government in the latest budget? It is well above 5%, it is about 5.44% the fiscal deficit. The Fiscal Responsibility Act passed by both the Parliament and the Kerala Legislature puts a ceiling of 3% fiscal deficit. And our fiscal deficit is well uh, 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 within the, the, that range, it is below 3%. So how can you allege that our uh, economy is weak, our economy is mismanaged? It is you who have mismanaged uh, the Indian economy. This uh, criteria, this, this, this fact shows that you have miserably mismanaged the, the uh, eco Indian economy. You have, uh, in the last 10 years, yes. you have taken a loan of more than 100 lakh crores. You have incurred a loan of uh, more than 100 lakh crores. And uh, you are uh, uh, preventing states from taking loans. Okay. What is your mor moral authority to deny us uh, borrowing limit? You, what is your moral authority to, to uh, allege that our economy is weak and our economy is mismanaged? GVL, will you respond to this? Because, you know, in this uh, court, the centre yes. has been pretty scathing in its uh, points that have been made with regards to Kerala. It has gone on to say that, uh, uh, that Kerala will perhaps negatively impact India's credit rating due to its state debt. The government warned that any state defaulting on debt uh, servicing could create reputation issues as well and perhaps even a domino effect. These are very strong words that you have used. Uh, <clears throat> that that only t uh, the, you see the the government's uh, uh, statements are a matter of fact. These are not allegations, Mr. Prakash. And, and if the Kerala government has uh, uh, a rejoinder, I think l let them have the courage of conviction to to bring out a white paper on the state of the Kerala economy. Let them. I th uh, 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 I think just mere political arguments or political allegations won't work. Number one. Number two. Post COVID, government's borrowing has certainly gone up because because the state central government continued to assist the states. Central government uh, uh, lifted the entire burden of uh, bailing out state governments when COVID hit revenues of the state and central governments. 
I think the entire co uh, money on COVID management was uh, uh, incurred by the central government. Central government assisted uh, 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 all the manufacturing unit, the MSME sector with a lot of guarantees. It was central government which provided more than 2 lakh crores by way of uh, various uh, COVID related uh, assistance Stopping the measures. states from so borrowing. And, and as far as debt to GDP. If they you, see, yes. the, you see, the states borrowing also, states cannot borrow indiscriminately because eventually it is the central government which, which, is, which has to stand as a guarantee. States cannot, cannot if they do not have the, uh, uh, if they do not have the resources, if they do not have the income stream to repay their debt, if they cannot service their debt as it is happening in Kerala today, who does it suffer? Who, who, who has to take the ultimate responsibility for it? The union government. Okay. So Will you give a quick response on this MB and certain, then I bring in Mr. Savanan and talk about the DMK viewpoint. Yes. Yeah, of, of course, Mr. Uh, BJP's representative is saying that state cannot uh, borrow indiscriminately. But who have in, uh, borrowed indiscriminately? I have given the figures. Uh, tell, counter me with facts and figures. Your debt GDP ratio is 59%. So thank you for admitting that the uh, union government has borrowed uh, a lot in the last 10 years after the Modi government. 5.9% uh, of the GDP. And I have given the figure from from from, from our budget documents from our budget documents that our debt our debt GDP ratio is only 36%. And uh, uh, let me also uh, make it clear that your interest payment in the latest budget is 25% of the total budget. The okay, now shifting of the total focus budget, to Tamil Nadu, we have Mr. Sarvanan. But before, our, our in the interest payment is only 15%. Before, before how that, can you preach us, GVL, I'm uh, coming to the point that has been made by the Tamil Nadu government. What is your moral authority when to preach us fiscal consolidation? Yes, when they were actually protesting, they said... That Tamil Nadu's share from the total divis, uh, divisible uh, pool of central taxes had decreased from 5.305% <laughs> under the 12th Finance Commission to 4.079% under the 15th Finance Commission. So this is the charge that is coming from Tamil Nadu. No, I, I, you see, uh, you may have heard uh, the speech of the Honorable Prime Minister, where he uh, he lambasted some of these uh, uh, states in in making those claims, as if you are not independent entities. Any state in this country is not a republic. To say that okay, what I have collected, I should get that money or I should get more. I think this is this is nothing but a fissiparous tendency. You cannot have such divisive tendency. If the same question were to be asked in Tamil Nadu. Most of the revenues come from Chennai or from capital cities. Why is money being spent in remote parts of Tamil Nadu? Every district, if it says, I should, I should get the same expenditure, I should get the same money that I am contributing to the economic kitty, then this only mega cities in this country will survive. No money will be left. You will be left with no money to spend in backward districts of Tamil Nadu or any other state. So this is a very flawed argument. Then as far as uh, share of Tamil Nadu is concerned, there are these, uh, 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 these finance commission, these are not decisions made by the government. Certainly there is a finance, uh, uh, these are finance commission recommendations which evolve after a series of discussions and deliberations with all stakeholders, including okay. state governments. And there is a lot of money that goes to states beyond even this divisible pool. Mr. Because Sarvanan, un is, un unlike is the, the Congress. Is unlike, the, is unlike, the, unlike the UPA, which gave 32%, we have given 42%. Okay. Will you respond to that, Mr. Sarvanan? Is this yeah. more yeah. of, uh, you know, opposition for opposition's sake? Yeah, see, <clears throat> uh, this uh, divisive argument. In fact, in fact on his treaty visit, Prime Minister had said that Tamil Nadu had got 2.5 times more money from the centre under him than 10 years of the UPA government. See, uh, that's what, this uh, argument of the BJP spokesperson, Mr. Narasimha Rao, that uh, it is a fissiparous nature, it is a divisive, it is a tukade tukade gang. Probably uh, this criticism should have been aimed at Mr. Narendra Modi when he was the chief minister. He thundered, Gujarat is giving 60,000 crores. What is the union government giving to us? We are not a beggar state. This is what the 
yes to while chief minister of gujarat said when he was the chief minister suddenly when he becomes the prime minister he forgets that once upon a time he was the champion of federalism and he was the champion of states rights now you would be aware of what mr subramaniam bbr subramaniam the joint secretary at pmo said he said he admitted on video that the prime minister's office tried to undermine the 14th finance commission they wanted to ensure that low funds little funds should be given to the states and all the funds should devolve with the state government and this is the same uh, prime minister went to the parliament and said you know how much money i have given to the states it's 48 percentage this is the duplicity the bjp practices and when we speak about devolution it is not just about gst it encompasses so many things when the prime minister says that so much of money has been devolved in the last 10 years that is because pure inflation we are not paying the same money for petrol and diesel we are not paying the same tax for petrol and okay, diesel okay so we we, we have someone who has heard just all the sides just of the moment, argument just a moment just a moment let me finish yes. let me finish there is yet another important thing the thing is this the union government gives funds but it ties us in knots it says you should not do this you should not do that you should not you should print the name of the prime minister you should print the name of the prime minister's name half the 80 percentage of all the schemes are run by the state government's funds but they say it is pm's name so they give for 16 lakh house they give 2 lakhs and say print no, pm's no, name this, this is this is completely andhra pradesh. false we saw andhra pradesh how how the union finance minister is that her job went to a ration shop and chided the collector why the prime minister's photo is not there is this what the uh, union finance minister should do this is the way the bjp conducts politics and okay. coming to our prakrit you know this, this minute, point this point of that course point. is about just, the some of the states uh, gvl realizing <laughs> that the central welfare scheme many from you know actually the which are subject of the state list or so the concurrent list are great vote puller but that reaction that came from your government was also perhaps exaggerated to say that this is central government scheme and hence the picture of the prime minister should be there no i i think this is one government one prime minister who has not imposed his name on any scheme is it the prime minister uh, uh, avas yojana or is it narendra modi avas yojana you are government can i can i just complete can i i, I let me re, re, let me respond and then you can come in let me respond maria we could have called all these schemes if we were shameless like the congress if we were shameless like the governments of dmk we would have named it after our leaders only we have not done that prime minister is not a name it okay. is a central centrally sponsored so Mister, let me try and understand or not. how, how this point that has been made uh, by uh, by, uh, by gvl narsimha rao and others on this panel how do you look at this argument that is the center being unfair to the states as the states are claiming well you know a lot of the things that you've been this tutu mama about that of the two sides is about facts it's not an opinion and facts can be ascertained so agree on a independent auditor and see exactly how much how much funds have been devolved to each state uh, to kerala to tamil nadu and so on and this should be a very simple issue of just checking out the facts and there's no need for heat or of any kind of bluster we'll just see the facts and 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 that would be the best way to to um sort this out i think the bigger question actually is not so much the fund devolution but the big the bigger uh, factor is the inequality that has developed between the north and the south and that's going to be a problem with with this delimitation thing sitting on our heads and 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 you know i i mean a, a lady from tamil nadu said to me you know she was typical conservative 9 foot sari lady barefoot and she says you know i have to learn hindi now 
And I said, why? Because all my servants are from Bihar or UP. I don't get a Tamilian as a servant. Well, you know, when the G- the difference between the per capita GDP gets so great that you have this migration, you that is this place. And, and so I personally think that the South also should recognize that they are far richer. On all parameters, the South is doing better on all human parameters. And so they will also have to realize that they're doing so well without this devolution worry, etc. that that they... Uh, uh, anyway, I, I, I think you were asking me about the devolu- de- devolution of money and the debate that's just been going on. And, and, and I think the simple answer is facts. Okay. So in this entire debate of narrative of uh, North versus South, there is an interesting development which has happened today with regards to Bharat Ratna. We are now being joined by N.V. Subhash, P.V. Narasimha Rao's grandson. He has been awarded uh, Bharat Ratna as well. Uh, Mr. Uh, former Prime Minister was awarded Bharat Ratna by the Modi government today. Um, N.V. Subhash, uh, you are a BJP leader, of course. I am going to say that uh, for the record and for our viewers. Uh, this honor uh, to P.V. Narasimha Rao, is this coming too late? Exactly. Thank you for uh, calling me on your esteemed channel and uh, we feel very proud and honored. And uh, not only that, uh, it's a very emotional moment at this point of time as a member of the, you know, the family member of uh, Narasimha Rao and uh, Bharti Anta Party Telangana State Spokesperson. We feel proud that uh, uh, Nandra Modi's government has uh, recognized the contributions of late Narasimha Rao's uh, for the development of the society, people, public and uh, you know, the, uh, the country. We have been hoping that uh, definitely uh, Narasimha Rao will be honored with highest civilian award but we never expected that this will be today and we are also confident that only Narasimha, uh, uh, only Modi's government will definitely recognize because as you can see in your archives, uh, Narasimha Rao's uh, contribution has been duly recognized by Modi's government whether it's in uh, parliament or in uh, you know, the public meeting or in private or any place because a person who has really sacrificed his entire life for the development of this country and uh, many people who have really benefited by his economic reforms and liberalization policy where at that point of time our country was in deep trouble where we did not have enough revenues and uh, you know the funds for uh, even to run the country he has taken very very bold steps and uh, many of the you know the Bharti Yanta Party leaders especially LK Adhwani ji and Vajpayee ji also has uh, made uh, you know the policy to be implemented and to be passed in the parliament and uh, today uh, his recognition has been duly recognized and uh, it is a very honor and very happy moment for us as a you know the member of the family mrs subhash one thought certainly is that uh, uh, being from the family of uh, the former Prime Minister who was from the Congress party, one may ask, could you have joined the Congress? Yeah, it is uh, late, but uh, never, uh, you know, never late. And uh, uh, though he belonged to the Congress party, uh, Modi ji has really recognized his, you know, the contributions. And as you can see, the award is of uh, Padma, uh, Manam, uh, uh, Padma Sri Award or uh, Padma Vibhushan or to Bharat Ratna, people who have contributed for the country and for the society and development of, uh, you know, uh, the uh, uh, development is the only agenda, whether it is uh, in, uh, you know, the culture or in sports or in uh, literature or in political parties. They don't have to belong to only RSS or, uh, you know, Bharti Yanta Party. Different political, uh, you know, uh, leaders have been duly recognized. And uh, this is the greatness of uh, Modi's government. You know, one view certainly is that this is some kind of messaging uh, linked to BJP government's outreach in southern India because they realize that, that was, that's a challenge uh, for the party to win those states to get, its num- to get numbers in the Lok Sabha. See, whatever, uh, whatever the reason, uh, I don't... Uh, 
uh, you know the want talked about uh, the politics that why this time you know this uh, this segment has been chosen on that uh, though uh, the congress party had enough opportunities uh, in uh, 2009 or 2014 also they did not really recognize his contributions so uh, i don't want to talk about uh, you know the election as the agenda and why it has been given it is only the recognition of his contributions has been duly respected. This is what I wanted to tell in your channel today. And uh, we feel very, very proud on that. Though they had, you know, other political parties had enough opportunities to recognize his contributions, but none of them have done. As I said earlier, whether it is, uh, you know, the Congress party or other, other, other political parties also, Narendra Modi's government has duly recognized for people who have been constantly focusing on the development and welfare of the people. This is what, uh, you know, the greatness of uh, Narendra Modi is, uh, you know, the, the government. Elections were there in 2009, 2014. South India was there earlier also. And, uh, you know, the Congress party had enough opportunities, but they did not recognize. So, if you have to talk about, uh, you know, the politics, it is really slap on the face to uh, the Congress party because his, you know, their own leader, their own person who has really sacrificed for entire life for the benefit of the Congress party and for the nation has been constantly, consistently has been insulted by their own leaders. This is very, very painful to us, the admirers and the family members on that. So, it is, it is not, um, you know, it is not an uh, occasion, it is, uh, it is a welcome occasion and we feel very, very proud and honored and uh, uh, his soul, I think, will be happy today. All right, uh, Mr. Subhash, really appreciate your time and congratulations to the entire family of uh, late Prime Minister P.V. Narasimha Rao. So, Mr. Sarvanan, is the uh, opposition just looking for politics where perhaps it is not? See, this is what the family talking, thinks. See, see, it's a, when we speak about the Bharat Ratna, it is the constant refrain of the BJP that the Congress has not done anything in the last 60 years. Now, what are you doing? You are recognizing the services of a Prime Minister for being the Prime Minister of the Congress and taking the Indian economy out of the doldrums. So what, what message are you sending? And who is calling? Who, who is going to call this as a master stroke? Are they going to call this politically astute? Just because his grandson or great grandson has joined the BJP? What, what kind of a message is the BJP trying to send here? Okay, Gurcharan Das has a point. Gurcharan Das has a point before I bring in GVL. Yes, good Charan. Do you know, in, in public morality, hmm. one should look at the consequences and not the motivations of the actors. In other words, Narsimha Rao achieved one of the greatest, was, represented one of the greatest moments of our history. That's right. The way Deng, what Deng represented in China, what Margaret Thatcher did in the case of the UK. And so it doesn't matter what was the motivation of which government, but he deserves, deserved it. And it's a great moment, I think. The country needs to recognize that this, that we won our economic freedom in 1991, not in 1947. And, and, and so all I just wanted to say is that I'm delighted that uh, Narsimha Rao, has got his Bharat Ratna, it, whether it's politics or what did it, it doesn't matter. Hmm. Okay, so that's an understanding of uh, perhaps, uh, you know, a more of a neutral observer. Uh, can we not look at politics of with all the visits that have happened also, uh, MB Rajesh? Because, you know, of course, uh, the visit to Kochi will be seen as political. There is an outreach which is happening visibly. But uh, the BJP says that uh, he is the Prime Minister who is travelling to various parts of India to ensure that they are not left out of the development story of India. MB? Question is to me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. See, uh, Prime Minister Modi had... Uh, visited Kerala during the last uh, uh, assembly elections and he denounced uh, Kerala's development model and he uh, compared Kerala with uh, Somalia. So uh, BJP has always been uh, 
downplaying the, the uh, achievements of uh, Kerala and BJP has always been uh, trying to paint Kerala's uh, gains in a bad way. So, uh, we, uh, this time also BJP is trying uh, to, to uh, target Kerala because we have seen how the union government has denied us uh, support and help uh, during the worst flood we had faced in 2018 and subsequently again in 2019. Uh, Mr. Narasimara was claiming that uh, union government was uh, sending a helping hand to states during COVID pandemic. But our experience is that the union government has turned a blind eye towards uh, Kerala during the COVID pandemic. And now they are denying us uh, our due share in our uh, resources, in our country's resources. Tax devolution has drastically come down by half and uh, our borrowing la limit has been uh, reduced. So all this uh, anti-Kerala uh, position taken by the union government and BJP uh, uh, is in the mind of people of our, uh, our state. Okay. So GBL? BJP won't get any, any benefit uh, from Modi's GBL? visit. I, I, <clears throat> these are, these are uh, political, uh, this is political rhetoric devoid of any substance. How much did the government of Kerala spend on uh, the COVID vaccination program? Did you spend any money? Who gave, who spent all that money in vaccinating 230 crore, giving 230 crore doses of vaccines to people? It was it not you. the central I'll government? Tell you. The entire vaccination program for the entire country was spent by the central government. Number one. Number two, who paid, who, who, foot, who footed the bill for giving free food grains to 80 crore people of this country, including a large number of people in Kerala? Was it not the central? Did you pay a penny in that? Free food grains. For even, even now, we have announced it can, for the next five years. Is that, does that not cost money to the government of, of, government of India? Is, does that come free to in the government of India? Government borrow, government procures your rice, wheat at, at, uh, at MSP prices and from different other states and gives it to Kerala. Can I comment? Most of the uh, Kerala is dependent on PDS grains. May, and it is central may, government which puts the entire... May I respond so now? What are you, how are you saying that central government is doing nothing? No, come on, let me complete. So you cannot, you Mayor see, for, no. for, for, if you want to Maria. indulge in indiscriminate borrowing hmm. and it will affect not only your finances, it will affect the national financial stability and it is the central sovereign government of India which is accountable to any loans whether it's taken by the central government or by the state governments. Therefore, there is a need for tightening of the belt. And okay. most of the spending of the central government okay. is and in infrastructure. MB quickly respond to this is and it, then I bring in investment. Mr. Sarvanan. We have yes, go ahead, MB. See, uh, this is the government, the Modi government is the government which has uh, uh, sent us a bill for giving uh, food grains during flood, 2018 floods. Immediately after the flood, they charged us for the food grains uh, uh, they have given. And this is the government who had uh, sent us bills for uh, extending uh, support, army and air force support. No, from the Immediately disaster management the flight, fund, which is again given by support. the central government. Uh, see, see, this is this is the approach, and they are indulging in blatant lies. They, they this the BJP spokesperson is indulging in blatant lies. See, uh, it is the government. Uh, no, Mr. The government of Mr. Kerala Rajesh, had to resort Mr. Rajesh, to one challenge what is the and to raise contribution of the to, the uh, to, to fund uh, COVID vaccination. See, for COVID vaccination, to fund COVID vaccination, what is the contribution the government of gave a call central government to uh, raise contributions disaster from, fund? from the state, from the from the people. Okay, okay, you know, we are seeing See, multiple sides, so I want, I, I, let you me come back to Mr. Sarvan and then I close this discussion with Gurcharan Dar. Gurcharan Dar, Mr. Sarvan, are the states taking this opposition too far? Because, you know, yeah. it is tending to be divisive. The idea, is co idea with which this government came in was cooperative federalism. The states also have their duty towards the center. The center has towards the states. I've asked yeah. GVL that who is trying to present the real picture. Then, then is this something, is this some kind of fog which is being created by the states? No. This you know, fog I, is created by the BJP. 
see the problem is this me. see the union right. if you look at the spokesperson the bjp's narrative that as though the union government has got a separate source of income it is only the states which contribute to the income of the union the subjects of the state which contribute to the union union does not print money it does not have a gold mine or a diamond mine so that he takes the money and gives it that does not that is not the way this operates and that is how mr gvl narsim rao is projecting for regard to the covid vaccines 35000 crores is the money spent by the union government that is peanuts compared to the taxes they have levied on the petrol and diesel in the last 10 years if you look at the international crude oil prices right now we should be paying 60 rupees only for the petrol but we are paying 100 rupees the bjp government why don't you reduce excise then pinling that 40 rupees I would, I would you ask Gurcharan Das to clear it. Why don't you reduce that? Gurcharan Das, you know, this, this narrative is bad? playing out at multiple levels. Bad? But in the run-up to elections, we, you, you have not even passed on the benefits the that we have given Give me the by real way of picture. lowered excise duty. What is the truth? The reality behind you know, these fund allocation war which is there. The, it, it's what I, listening to this, I feel very sad. Because what it reflects is that there is no trust and i think when there the trust when this kind of polarization has taken place and when the polarized when the trust is lost i feel that you really need to um you 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 the only way is for people to be able to ultimately trust each other and um uh, i i i i you know it's 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 there are a lot of things you are discussing are matters of fact and those matters of fact can be this can be put on a in, a, in black and white by an auditor an independent auditor which both of you sides agree but the when states i mean india is 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 really an amazing uh i mean our constitution the kind of what we have created is quite is is a kind of miracle the All fact right. that we have remained a democracy a federal democracy uh, all these things are really something to be proud of absolutely mb rajesh gvl narsimha rao a sarvanan and gulcharan das really appreciate your time and let me go straight to washington dc where kv subramanian executive director imf is joining us uh, uh, mr subramanian really appreciate your time the karnataka chief minister says that formula to calculate the devolution of tax revenue to states was incorrectly altered by the 15th finance commission what is the truth Firstly, uh, Maria, as you mentioned, uh, these are decisions that are taken by the Finance Commission. Um, the members of the Finance Commission, including its chairperson, visit every state, have consultations with every state, understand their needs, and then uh, decide the formula for the allocation. So that's the first point. Second point to uh, to keep in mind is that um, when it comes to the uh, overall expenditures. you know if states decide to uh, spend their money on uh, freebies then blaming the center for you know having their fisc not in order i don't think is actually proper um, and i think uh, in the particular examples that we're talking about we all know very well why the fisc has been you know uh, has has gone into uh, distress um you know in earlier in, in the earlier government there was uh, no problem you know those five guarantees actually uh, have not only have they put the fisc in in distress they've also actually stopped capital expenditures in fact the deputy chief minister of karnataka himself actually had mentioned that so i think these are political posturing um, the formula that the finance commission uses is very 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 clear um, i i and and i think that the last point that uh, i would i would like to mention here is that the uh, the proportion of the state's revenues that come from grants from the center you know that are allocated by the finance commission is not the entire it's about you know around about anywhere between 15 to 20% so there is still a large proportion um you know uh, of of revenues that state can get 
you know they actually have excise uh, on on petrol diesel etc on on alcohol um, and and so you know they do have the uh, degrees of freedom to be able to actually generate revenues on their own so you know uh, as they say in the you know uh, um, so, sometimes you need sort of a, 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 a you know a fall guy to to blame and that's what seems to be the story here Tell us, uh, you know, because not just one state, that is Karnataka, there are other states are also saying that the allocation is discriminatory and not transparent. And that is causing a lot of concerns among them. You know, there are protests that are happening by Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka. So let me, you know, put out some statistics. Let's take two states that are not in the south. Um, let's take Gujarat. Um, you know, for every rupee that Gujarat contributes to, um, you know, to, to, the, to the kitty, uh, it gets 28 paise back in term, you know, from, from the center. You know, take, take another state, Maharashtra. Um, again, uh, you know, of, for every rupee that it contributes, it gets 8 paise back. This is data, you know, uh, um, uh, from, from, from various budget documents, etc. So, you know, uh, you can, you, you, one can ask the question, you know, is there basically discrimination there? No, this is part of the Finance Commission's, uh, you know, uh, uh, process. And I know for a fact that this, the government has been, central government has been adhering to the recommendations of the uh, Finance Commission. The Finance Commission, you know, decides on, you know, how, on allocations based on a formula where equity, you know, among states is a very important consideration as well. So, um, you know, the states that you're talking about compared to those, as I gave you the statistics, I think it is absolutely clear that there is basically, you know, uh, uh, th this is sort of a unnecessary issue that is being raked up here. Um, I think when, when, you know, in a, in a country like India with the kind of diversity that we have, uh, there will be differences in economic progress. And in order to ensure that our social fabric remains, um, you know, re re remains solid, it is important to actually, you know, take other states along and states that are, you know, uh, economically a little bit more backward will need, you know, bigger, bigger grants. For instance, if you look at states like Bihar and Uttar Pradesh, actually, who are, you know, are, aren't doing as well, actually, they get, you know, a bigger proportion, you know, for every rupee that they contribute in terms of their you know, the, the revenue, they actually get a higher share. That's because they're actually backward. And I think that is something which I, as an economist, leave the politics aside, would, would definitely support. Okay, well, why is this narrative now being seen? You know, of course, few months to go for the elections. That issue aside, uh, the fact is that the Finance Commission members are chosen by the center, the government of the day. That is also something that the, that the states allege, that... You know, they would be doing something, uh, you know, the Finance Commission would be listening to what the centre wants. But Maria, you know, that aspect where this Finance Commission members are chosen by the centre has been true for every Finance Commission, not just, you know, the, the, the recent Finance Commission. Uh, and as for, you know, why is this coming up? I think that is a that is a political question that, you know, I can speculate on. To me, I think the main reason is that in the states that are actually crying, you know, horse at this point in time are the states that have actually made, you know, promises on freebies that are completely untenable and, and, and which is what is making their fist really come under stress. And that is why they're actually crying horse. So I, to me, it basically is a completely political, you know, uh, um, uh, 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 you know, c c question. Um, this is not an economic question. I think uh, in the past as well, if you look at, I'm sure there have been, you know, if you go and read history, there are, there must have been states that might have actually expressed this kind of concern. But I can tell you for a fact that having been, you know, uh, uh, um, be closely associated with this, there is no lack of transparency. There is no lack of process. Absolutely due process is followed. You know, whatever the recommendations of the Finance Commission are is what is followed. And I gave you data of states that are, you know, which actually might, uh, can, 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 you know, uh, sort of cry even hoarser compared to some other states. I mean, I gave you data for Gujarat. I gave you data for, for, for Maharashtra as well. So I think, uh, you know, the data clearly suggests that this is just empty rhetoric. All right. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, KV Subramanian. Uh, appreciate your time. Let me bring in T.S. Singhdeo, uh, former Deputy Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh, also senior Congress leader. Mr. Deo, you know, is this rhetoric at play as, as K.V. Subramanian, former uh, chief uh, economic advisor, was saying that there was there is this narrative which is clearly divisive, north versus south, and uh, the southern states blaming the center for uh, 
for, for not ensuring transparent allocation of funds? It is becoming a divisive and it is becoming political. There is no doubt about it. No doubt about it. We are in politics if we talk about public representatives and none of us is above and beyond politics. None. Anybody who says that he is acting uh, absolutely in a neutral uh, way, he is not speaking correctly. He is not speaking truthfully. Whether it be the person at the highest uh, level or the person at the lower or the lowest levels. All of us who are political persons, uh, we become uh, political, our viewpoints are political, so we should not shy away from that. That right. apart, what is the justice or the injustice of the matter? Hmm. Uh, that is what hmm. needs to be looked into. Okay, tell there me, are states since you, you were the Deputy Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh, you must have seen how the centre was doing the allocation when you were in power. Was there discrimination as the Congress Chief Ministers of other states are alleging? There were departments where funds were coming and there were departments where funds were not coming. It was not even handed. I was, for example, uh, a minister with the health department. And uh, for a time, uh, for a large portion of the five years, also minister with the panchayat department. And uh, in projects, I was seeing that in certain projects, there was uh, not no discrepancy. There was uh, uh, no unfairness. Yet there were other departments in the states where revenues were held back. Uh, that is also the truth of the matter. Uh, you see, GST devolution. Now, we were one of the states who suffered in the, and are continuing to suffer in the GST regime, where our VAT income uh, was higher than uh, the projected GST revenue. So, were we being, uh, were we being, uh, we being compensated for that in time? There were many a times where we were not. Are the payments of Manrika, were they coming in time? No, they were not. Were the payments for PMGSY, uh, they were okay. So, it is not as if everything is uh, uh, askew. Okay. There were schemes where funds were available and there were very critical schemes where funds were not available. All right, yes, Singh Deo, thank you so much for sharing your experience. Uh, we are slipping into a short break. After that, we will be getting you voices of people of these three states, Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. What do they think about the claims that are being made by the, their governments and also by the centre? As we decode the real picture of this fight that is ongoing, we decided to also speak to the people of these three states, Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. This is what they had to say. For the last few days, we have been talking about the alleged tax bias where different states from the south have been fighting the centre and claiming that the distribution of taxes are not really being organised properly. But a lot of politics that have been talked about, uh, especially keeping in mind the Lok Sabha election. Let's keep politics aside. What does the general public think about this? Do they really feel that this is an unnecessary election game? What appears to be essentially a political drama, but there does exist a sound federal financial issue here. If you look at uh, Mr. Sidramaya's claim, there is a reduction of around 22% from the 14th Finance Commission uh, allocation of share of taxes to Karnataka to the 15th Finance Commission. From 4.7%, it has reduced to 3.4%. So he has a problem there. And also, special uh, grants in aid and the grants in aid, there is a substantial reduction yeah, from average of 20,000 crores the last three years to 13,000 crores. And of course, there are other issues such as, you know, Magan Rega uh, uh, payouts are not reimbursed and accumulated GST compensation amounts to about 56,000 crores. So there does exist a federal financial sound case here, but the way it is played out looks like a political drama. The claim that the chief minister has put seems to be justified. And as an entrepreneur, the taxes that are being collected have to be you know, kind of returned to the state, but not necessarily in the same uh, methodology or in the number that has gone from the state, because the central has a larger responsibility of distributing it equally for the development of all the states.
as far as uh, our our business running is concerned we do not have any challenges in terms of the collection of taxes and or disbursements of taxes it's been made in a very very smooth manner we are given only 12 rupees out of 100 rupees you know like to make it very simple uh, all of us should be treated well all the children as uh, famous kuempu i mean the poet laureate kuempu said uh, mother india children we are all e we are must be equally treated i would say that you know Tamil Nadu government alleges that the central government is indulging in what they call financial discrimination against the state when it comes to allocation of funds. I have with me an interesting mix of Chennai, Chennai it's techies and students. Let's get a sense of what they think. The, the state of Tamil Nadu and some other southern states, they have done well in terms of, for example, ensuring that control of population or ensuring um, uh, enrollment of education. So this has created a better environment for economic prosperity. Now, when we are not um, supporting such achievements, it looks like you know punishing a student who is performing well. Obviously, um, the rest of the states, like UP and the other states, are um, they are our brother states. Obviously, we don't mind sharing slightly more from whatever pool that we get, but it does not mean that we should suffer that they should only get the lion's share of it. I think it's good that these states are voicing their opinion and uh, the voice is kind of getting heard. That's the best we can do. And it doesn't matter, right? So if it's Karnataka or Andhra, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, it really doesn't matter, or even Maharashtra or Uttar Pradesh. See, we don't really have to discriminate amongst ourselves. At the end of the day, you know, it's not about Tamil or it's not about Canada. We're all Indian. I believe there is no proper transparency or communication so when it comes to finance, you know, it's all about numbers. As a common people, so we need proper transparency in terms of you know, so what is, has been allocated and how much has been spent in terms of projects. Mm -hmm. So these allocations are popping out, only a problem occurs. They should have proper policies to allocate funds for all the metropolitan cities so that the city develops, so that the right. country's economy also uh, develops. Uh, and then people are the ones who are suffering. What I want to say is... Uh, uh, when it comes to people, government should choose uh, the welfare of people instead of finding fault in other governments. The cost of living in Kerala uh, is very much high in present, at present, like a water bill, electricity bill, and the cost of petrol. Usually, cost of petrol in Kerala is 10 rupees more than what neighboring states are charging. So, people are actually, actually, the Kerala government is not managing the fund properly. That's why the finance problem is arise if government of kerala will give the required documents and uh, the required um, documents and uh, required reports to government of india they will definitely uh, give funding whatever funding which is requested for the projects when uh, the the future projects as well as government of india projects which is um, uh, coming to kerala they will definitely give it to the kerala state and uh, I, I i i think there is no the, the, the kind of discrimination which is um, shown by government of india to united you know, states in particular kerala state